gal, back. Um, can you guess what this topic is about in regards to things? This is only one of the topics coming up. I'm going to do a short series. Uh, how many videos? I don't know. I'm going to be about three maybe at this point. I've thought up to, to cover grounds on everything that's happened since my last flowering set or indoor flowering session, I should say. My uh, outdoor flowering session, in my opinion, was a dismal failure. But the biggest portion of that had to do with being inexperienced with growing cannabis outdoors and the fact that we planted way too late. So, uh, coupled with that, is we figured maybe we'd get something out. We got something out of it, but yeah, it was pretty dismal. The, the plants didn't finish right. We got a cold snap for about a week that sent temperatures down low enough that there was no way without everything being in a greenhouse outdoors, a greenhouse of sorts outdoors, there was no way we were going to be able to keep them outdoors. The ground got cold enough that uh, uh, they wouldn't have survived for longer than a few more days, 50 degrees, you know, that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, said with that, so what happened is right after my last flowering session, I came down with a really nasty bug, and guess what that was? No, no, it wasn't thrips. Mites, ha! Not even short, not even close, not even close. Not even close. Fungus nets, ha! I scoff at fungus nets. No, it was the infamous, the ever rootless, root aphid. Yeah, them old bastards. You don't know all the cuss words I spoke when I saw that through my 40 power scope. Uh huh. When you see a nice green, luscious plant, it's green and luscious the day before you come in the next morning or whatever, the next hours or whatever it is, to check on your plants. And it looks like it's gone without water for a week. Well, not a week, but it's gone without water long enough that, oh shit, I don't think this is going to recover if I water it. Kind of look. Yeah, this happened to me a couple of times. I go, what in the hell is going on? I thought it was fungus gnats. So, what do you treat for fungus gnats? Well, you've got things like neem oil, Azmax, which is basically neem oil, uh, you know, maybe some SM90, you know, that kind of thing for fungus gnats, you know. Maybe uh, throw in some uh, nematodes in your soil to maybe beat back on them, you know, that kind of thing, huh? Maybe throw in some extra neem into your neem oil make it extra powerful to go after little bastards right nah nah none of this shit worked none of it none of it i even went to dun dun dun, dun a new product or newer product pyganic or my approved pyrethroid mm, nope nope Two to three applications it requires. No. Nope. They don't wait around for that. No, 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 no. Nope, not even close. Yeah, they will uh they will take your crop in hours. Not days. You all these require days to work. You don't have days. You try and go after them days, you'll be chasing your ass for days. Because it, it looks like it beats it back and then it comes back. It beats it back and it comes back. It beats it back and it comes back. Yeah, you will chase your ass for days. I even tried things like Serenade. I had some Serenade. Tried that. This is some Botanicare. Well, I know it's too old now. It's been sitting around. Botanicare ES. Because it's been sitting around. So this is one of the first things we went after with the bass. It's like, oh. Fuck, man. No. E e no, 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 no. Because this requires two to three applications. No, no, no. Everything requires two to three applications. Not going to work. So, when you get these sons of bitches, you got a decision to make, and you better make it quick. You're either going to burn down your garden. No. Don't take that literally, all right? And I don't want anybody going down burning down their houses because they got bugs. Or nuke it. And no, 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 no. Don't think you got to wear a freaking hazmat suit and Geiger counter. No, 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 no. Just a play on words, okay? Just a play on words, please. 
sometimes some people have to take things so literally. Just calm down. It's okay. Here, here. Just join me for... Shit, you know what? I forgot to bring my smoke out. See, they uh, in my area, they shut down all the local dispensaries. So now I, if I want to go to a dispensary, I got to drive. Oh, minimum. What's the closest one? I think the closest one is Longmont, but it's still 20. I even clocked it. It's 20 something miles. Uh, then there's uh, Denver. But fuck, man. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, where were we going with all this? Anyway. Um. So, went through all this. What are you going to do? Are you going to nuke your garden? Well, you got to nuke your garden. Do you have hundreds of dollars to save your shit? Because it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars to save your shit, or you're going to end up just burning down your garden. So, I was in a position where I had enough varieties that were non uh not able to recoup on those if I let them go, so I had to do something. Twelve dollars versus hundreds of dollars. So but it did the trick. You know why? Imidacloprid. Imidacloprid is a synthetic a synthetic analog of nicotine. And have you guys ever heard of uh, Jerry Baker, the master gardener? Well, he uses tobacco or tobacco teas, basically pulling the nicotine out of the teas for use in insect, insecticides uh, naturally in a garden. And that's basically what's happening here. Uh, nicotine or derivatives of nicotine are contact poisons to pretty much any bug there is known, good and bad. Uh, then it has also um, uh, B. cyflurthrin, B. Cy Fluthrin, to make sure I pronounce that correctly. It's a synthetic pyrethroid, uh, so it gets everything else. So this is a two is an exclusive two-way formula. There you go. Nuked the garden, took care of it, done over with. But of course, because of all the bugs, that creates another problem. Because what you're doing? What are you doing? Now I don't know about the rest of you, but I've always known when you've got bugs like that, one of the things you got to do is you can't leave this shit just laying around in the soil all the time. So you got to, as you're feeding it all, you got to do heavy flushes to help flush the crap out. Well, of course, the bugs and crap are dying. So you want to flush their, their, got, them, their carcass and you want to get them out of there too. Because, uh, unfortunately, beneficials cannot live in the soil as long as this remains in the soil at certain concentrations. So you want to get it out as soon as you can. So there you go. So you're flushing the soil. But... That beans as it may be. So nuke the garden. There you have it. And you can see I tried everything. Neem oils. I mean everything you would normally use for something like that. Even brand new stuff out on the market. Uh, so as, now for thrips. We might as well talk about regular stuff while we're at it. For thrips. Um, I found this works real well. But I don't like using oil. Just a sticker they call it. Or a wedding agent. Uh, I, I use ag or agricultural soap is another name for it. I like to use this in plain water with an agricultural soap spray for thrips. Thrip. When I spray for thrips on the leaves, that's what I like to use. Uh, like to stay away from the oils and stuff. Part of the reason why is because when you spray oils on the leaves, when I have temperature issues down here, that has a tendency to make the plants stay wetter longer. Sometimes I have cooler temperature issues and I don't want the plants to stay wetter longer than necessary to avoid powdery mildew issues, okay? To avoid. So I got certain issues that I have to avoid and I have come up with ways to avoid them, that being one of them. Now, using like Azimax or neem oil for mites, I have had a very, very mixed results. Uh, what, what I'm going to try next time I get an outbreak in veg with them where I have the ability where the temperatures are willing where I can do several sprains. What I'm gonna try is uh, maybe use a neem oil application and apply azosol with it to boost the concentration of neem 
but still get the, I don't know, does the oil really matter that much or is it the neem issue? I think it's probably more the neem issue, but like I said, I've had very mixed results using just straight neem oil for mites. So I always use floor mite. Uh, I like to try and dip clones if I see any kind of a, anything that look like might be an outbreak anywhere in the garden. And what I'll do is I'll dip the clones that way. The clones basically at that point, well, I mean, when they come out from under the domes before I put them in cups, that way they will be protected uh, from any outbreak that may be going on in the garden at the time. That way I can concentrate on taking care of that while they're protected. And I don't have to worry about them. <coughs> the floor might works, works first time, every time. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't recommend full strength, but I believe I've used it up to full strength without any adverse issues. But that's usually in water, pH'd to just under 7, but by itself at full strength. But I'll, Usually what I'll do is I'll take a half a teaspoon, but I shake the shit out of the bottle. So it's got a little foam in it. So it's probably a little less than a half a teaspoon. And then I'll mix that with some cocoa wet. Cocoa Wet recommends a half a teaspoon per gallon. I put just a little over that because a half a teaspoon per gallon doesn't seem to get that slick wet, that shine on the leaf that you're looking for from a wetting agent when you spray down the leaves. A half a teaspoon isn't quite enough. So I put just a little bit more. And how do I get I just put a little bit more. You can basically tell when you go to stir up your, your solution if it's got a little bit of foam or little bubbles on top, you pretty much got it. Or if it's not enough sprayed on the leaf, if you do you see wetting going on, not add a little more. There you go. So yeah, floor mite works first time, every time. Uh, it's worth every penny you spend on it. Uh, like I said, with the neem oil, I've always had mixed results because I was using this for thrips. But during the course of getting ready to make this video, I was thinking about that mixed with that to boost the concentration of neem within the mixture to find out if that actually would kill off spider mites with this being a more natural solution over this i'll have to give it a try in the meantime thrips well they're a pain in the ass easy to get rid of but a pain in the ass okay thrips soil you know it's a little bit of neem you know i like to thrips neem but um sometimes actually before i found this i was always using that which works real well little bastards flying around in the room Fog the room. You'll get them. They can't go from plant to plant without getting nailed. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, just all you got to do, this This is the big can. I think it's like uh, 20 bucks for that. 20 bucks insurance to get rid of thrips. Especially in a room that's, uh, uh, it's supposed to be, I think it's 5,000 square feet room size on this one here. And the room is not quite that big. So, I know that it'll get a good penetration on the room and get everything. Um, this is Botan Botanicare ES. That didn't work. Like I said. Nematodes, that's another good. That's for fungus gnats in the soil or anything else in the soil that you know that gets in there. It works well if you start off with fresh and you do it as a regular regime off or if you can kill everything off, get everything cleaned out, then add them. But I've seen mixed results with those too. And, of course, the reason why is because my infestation was bad. I had a bad infestation. It snuck up on me. Where it came from, who the hell knows? I can't point fingers. It could come from anywhere. Um, my growing conditions are rather unique. Uh, I can't, I, I, I can literally say my growing conditions are different from anybody else's out there. Uh, unfinished basement is just a small piece of the inconsistencies I'm going to have because of uh, my growing conditions. That's just one little tiny piece. So anyway, there you have it. That's where it all started. Bugs. Uh, another video coming up on what happened after I took care of my bug issue because my issue didn't stop with bugs. It carried on with something else. So talk to that in another video. Next video. As a matter of fact, so talk to you later. Take care. And remember, create peace, cultivate cannabis.